Welcome to World of Warplanes and in this video we're taking a look at the Spitfire 14, the Tier 8 British fighter. And the map you can see before you is Road to Rome and the variant is Call of Duty. That has a repair airbase in the centre and four peripheral garrisons. So the next thing to do is take a look at the order of battle. Here it is and you can see my specialised Spitfire 14. I have a good pilot in this, lots of skills. For company I have an RB-17 bomber and on the enemy team there's another Spitfire 14, not specialised, and an enemy bomber, the Junkers 288C. So at this point we're thinking about tactics and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go left or south, I'm going to take a garrison and then I'm going to head to the airfield. With different opposition I might consider going to the airfield first on the assumption they would make uh, an attempt to take it before we could and I would try and deny that. And off we go. You are approaching the front line. Off we go. And you can see the ADA aircraft are appearing already, the air defence aircraft in case you don't know what the acronym means. And clearly what we want to do is try and get rid of these as quickly as possible capture the garrison and begin to exert pressure on the enemy team. Now what I hadn't noticed and right in front of me is that the RB-17 is flying low and over the same garrison and that's a bit of a shame. But it happens, we haven't communicated and we have the garrison. But slightly worryingly, the enemy team has already taken both their local garrisons and they've already been beginning to make progress on capturing the airfield. And that's a bit of a surprise. I didn't think they would be that quick. I also didn't expect that my team would fail to capture the second local garrison. Tactics. I made a decision at the start. I've stuck with it, which is exactly right. But it looks as if it may have been the wrong call. I should have come to the airfield first. So I begin to engage the enemy in an attempt to stop the airfield from falling to the enemy. And we're too late. And we're three sectors to one down and in fact the enemy is exerting pressure on us, not the other way around. No need to panic, I have a good aircraft. I would expect to be able to take this airfield and I'm going to set about doing so now. So now I'll wait for the air defence aircraft to appear. So we'll start engaging and making an impression on the airfield. Now we're in the middle of a lot of enemy aircraft here, or as I call it, a furball. I've got one air, air, air defence aircraft down already. How do I go about selecting another target? Well in this case I have my X key bound to lock nearest target and just before I kill an aircraft I'll press that to see what the next nearest aircraft is. Now when you're in a furball that's likely to be the next aircraft to shoot at. It's not so important for other t classes of aircraft, such as heavies, but when you're fighting in a turn fighter, it can give you just that split second advantage. And that's not an advantage you should throw away. So we're all make already making good progress to taking the airfield. We only need one more aircraft at this point begin to engage an enemy ground attacker and then I switch targets to an air defence aircraft because I'm going to kill that a lot quicker and get the airfield. And there we go. In the meantime my team has finally taken its second local garrison and we now have three sectors to two. The enemy Spitfire comes into view. Unfortunately for him I'm specialised and he isn't. I can easily get rid of him and now the airfield is secure. Now we're over a hundred points down at this point but we're in a good tactical position. Yes, the garrisons are under a bit of threat. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that in case I have to go to them and retake them. But the airfield is ours and I believe that I can hold it. Now it's important to keep looking at the minimap 
Everything depends on us being able to hold our garrisons here, as well as this airfield. If we do, the game has plenty of time to run, and we'll win. If we lose our garrisons, I've got to think hard about what I do next. If, however, the enemy loses a garrison, they're in a lot of trouble. Let's see how it works out. And I'm glancing at the minimap at this point and I can see the airfield is completely secure still and in fact we've just eliminated all threats to our garrisons. We're in a good tactical position. Not only that, one of the enemy garrisons is very nearly captured. I'm confident we're going to take it, so I'm going to stay at the airfield. First achievement comes true, the Komatsu Medal. 400 capture points in a single sortie in a fighter aircraft. I'm still confident about the garrison, but the enemy is working hard to keep it. I'll mark the bomber so the, bomb, the bots on my side can uh, shoot it down. We don't want to lose the airfield to that. And in fact, I'm able to do some work on it myself. Just want to make sure it doesn't come back. Press the X key. Now we're diving on a J7W1. And fortunately, it's not flying towards me. That would be bothersome, given its huge cans. And already we have 12,175 personal points, and we've got a Hero of the Sky Badge. Now, somewhat to my surprise, the garrison that I thought was going to fall to us from the enemy hasn't. That's been well defended, but the other one now is almost taken. Looking at the minimap, there's still very little threat to our garrisons. There's no reason for me to change my tactic. I'm going to stay at the airfield and continue to keep it safe. And there goes a Winged Legend notification. not very manoeuvrable FW-190A-8 becomes my next victim, except that the bot defender uh, took it away from me. Well, you have to leave the bot some fun. Now, we've taken a garrison, we've got four sectors to one, and the enemy team is in a horrible position. They have to decide whether they come and try and take the airfield and dislodge me, or whether they take the garrison. And it's actually hard to see how they're going to come back from this. just uh, gone into the lead as a result. Now the threat to one of our garrisons has increased a little but it's not enough to make me um, want to leave the airfield, especially as we have one of the enemy's garrisons. see a favourite tactic of mine, why should I go head on an aircraft when I can just get around behind it without taking damage? And that aircraft was the 20th that I'd shot down, and that's an ace. And this game is won. It's now just a question of mopping up. Complete control of the skies, as we've just been told, and the enemy Spitfire is dead. I decline to shoot at an XP-58 from the back. I'll go searching for other work to do just before we win the game. And there we have it. A victory. Rather a lot of medals there, and a nice haul of personal points. So let's review the results of this game. And if we hover over the center, we see it's the best result, a grade one fighter. All the plane specific missions are entirely complete in this case. Moving on to the credits or silver, if you prefer, 158,342 gross. Experienced players will know that if you want to see your expenses, unfortunately you have to come across to the message box. But in this case, the Spitfire wasn't shot down, so there's no repair cost. And as I use prepaid consumables, 
there's no consumable cost either and that 158,000 credits is in fact the net figure as well. Combat experience of 10,797 539 free experience uh, I'm using a premium account so there's a little bit of a bonus there and also it was a times three weekend game. And finally we have five tokens for the Akamatsu, the Marseille, the Winged Legend, Hero of the Sky and an Ace. Moving on to personal score we can see that we have 19,205 personal points quite a nice game. Two sectors captured 21 aerial targets destroyed which is one more than is needed for an ace 7204 aerial damage which is quite good in a fighter at tier 8 and 30 critical hits capture points of 720 and if we hover over that we'll see that 440 of those were for defending no surprise there given that we sat over the airfield for a large part of the game and confirmation on the team score panel that that was enough for first place uh, the RB17 on my team made a decent contribution and the enemy team, given they weren't specialised, also worked hard um, when they were at a considerable disadvantage. And there you have it, a good, if not exceptional, game in the Spitfire 14 from World of Warplanes. This is a test as I try to find out if I can make YouTube videos. However, if you liked it, please be sure to say so, and if you didn't like it, please keep that to yourself. This is Royal Flying Corps signing out, and remember, the flying is not the hard part, the landing is.